on the University of Iowa campus, tucked away in the mechanical and industrial engineering department. Machines and robotic arms whir and hum, busy printing. A 3D printer is at work, but it's not printing models, specs, or engineering parts. It's busy printing organs. It's not a mad scientist layer, but rather an engineering lab, exploring the possibility of tissue engineering. In the biomanufacturing laboratory, our focus is, is to manufacture, fabricate the tissue or, or organ replacement parts. So one of the exciting research in our laboratory is to fabricate a living organ in the very near future. Printing body parts may sound a lot like science fiction, but it's possible, and it begins with the printer, which is a lot like a traditional desktop printer or a 3D printer, and it all starts with the ink. With the bioprinting process, we replace ink, traditional ink, with the bio ink which is the solution made of biomaterials and cells, living cells. And then we print them in 3D. Tissue engineering is in its infancy, but the ultimate goal is to print an organ that is compatible with the human body and can be transplanted into a patient who needs it. If, say, the organ is diseased or damaged or uh, there is cancer with the organ, if the organ fails, then the, the patient needs to wait years to get a, an organ, a, a donor. So this is a, a very long time. Sometimes the patients cannot be able to survive in that period of time. So in order to save lives, you definitely need to manufacture organs that can be transplanted and save life. The goal in this lab is to fabricate or print the portion of the pancreas that is responsible for insulin production in an effort to overcome diabetes. But printing an organ or any cellular structure greater than one centimeter is a very difficult task, which is why the first step is to create something that mimics blood vessels. Fabricating something that has a thickness greater than a centimeter is very challenging because the cells inside the bio ink or the created structure cannot able to survive. They cannot able to get uh, nutrients, enough nutrients, growth factors, and oxygen. So in order to overcome this issue, we need to have blood vessels that needs to be integrated within the printed structure. Instead of trying to get something that closely mimics the natural system. We have been fabricating microfluidic channels, cellular microfluidic channels. They look like blood vessels and then we can directly print them. When we print them, we can give any complex shape we want. But engineers aren't doctors, which is why the research team on this project has students and researchers from a variety of backgrounds and disciplines, including Yin Yu, who received his medical degree in China before coming to the University of Iowa. I can apply my medical knowledge and all the background into this engineering field because people in engineering they don't know too much about biology. They need people from biology and medicine to cooperate to make this field forward. So this is a really interdisciplinary field. So we need people with different backgrounds. Yin has seen firsthand the devastation and difficulty of patients waiting for an organ. And he's using his medical training and research to provide the biology and anatomy side of the research. As a medical student you saw a lot of patients in the hospital. They're dying and waiting in the list of organ transplant, and they cannot get an organ. The biomedical engineering, especially tissue engineering, is a field that people are doing research to make the organ or tissue in the lab. That's why I'm interested in doing this kind of stuff. This bioprinting, organ printing field is pretty new. I'm just doing something that people never done before. Another doctoral student, Howard Chen, built the machine responsible for the bioprinting. His background is mechanical and industrial engineering, and he designed the robotics and software that prints the living structures. We want to print two different materials, and we want to do it concurrently to minimize fabrication time. So each one of these systems uh, is very well established on how well it works on its own. But how do we get these two systems to work together concurrently without uh, it getting in each other's way? So that is where a lot of the research lies. Howard built the printer from the ground up, a task he thoroughly enjoyed. Just love tinkering with things, just love, love you know, playing with Legos when I was a little kid. So you slowly graduate from Legos to building things out of metal, but that mindset never changes. It's just really cool just to get paid to just play with Legos all day long. And his toys are on the forefront where science, technology, and medicine intersect. The research team at the University of Iowa is breaking new ground and hopes to one day print an insulin producing portion of the pancreas and it all starts in an engineering lab where bright minds gather to think, create, and build. In order to manufacture something that lives, we need to know chemistry, we need to know biology, we need to research medicine, we need to know all these engineering concepts, robotics which is very important in getting something that you can control using a computer. 